Welcome to the Report for Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk tonight about a show called Wormwood, which is on Netflix, made by the famous uh, documentary filmmaker Errol Morris. Stick around and listen. It's an incredibly uh, important uh, miniseries that's uh, on at the moment. So I'm going to talk about that tonight. So stick around and listen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're going to talk about a show called Wormwood, which is a great new show on Netflix. It's, I think it's about four episodes that go for about an hour each. Uh, um, it's made by Errol Morris, um, you know, who made The Thin Blue Line uh, and a couple other really wonderful um, documentaries. You know, he's been making documentaries for over 40 years. Um, he's a pretty important filmmaker. He's one of the greatest um, documentarians in the world. He's very widely respected. His films all play at major film festivals all around the world. And uh, his new show is on Netflix at the moment. I think it came out, interestingly, it came out before COVID. And really, the interesting thing about Wormwood is it is about um, germ warfare. Um, that's essentially the backstory to what happened. Because a guy by the name of uh, Frank Olson um, fell to his death in 1953. He was a scientist who was a chemist. Um, and he fell mysteriously to his death. It was presumed to be a suicide. Uh, and then, you know, basically people thought, oh, well, you know, for whatever reason, the guy committed suicide, jumped out of a building, and that was that. And then in 1975, um, under President Ford, the US government admitted that um, uh, Frank Olsen was part of a CIA experiment under a guy by the name of Sidney Gottlieb, ladies and gentlemen, Sidney Gottlieb, who is the head of the MK Ultra. Um, organization, uh, mind control organizations. And so Frank Olson was one of the first victims of, um, you know, the beginnings of essentially what amounts to uh, CIA mind control experiments that involved LSD. So what the official story goes is that they fed LSD to this guy, Frank Olson, and he freaked out and jumped out of, a, you know, the, the 20th floor of a, a New York, um, you know, hotel uh, and fell to his death. But there's something even deeper strange going on there, and that, that this itself uh, appears to be a cover story. This is a fascinating book about Sidney Gottlieb. Sidney Gottlieb is, is one of the most mysterious people that's ever lived, ladies and gentlemen. He was a, um, uh, uh, a Jewish immigrant who uh, came to America. Oh, his family came to America. He was born in New York. Um, he, he studied as a chemist. And then he got involved in the CIA, uh, you know, before it was even called the CIA under Alan Dulles, uh, in the early 1940s. And then by the early 1950s, he'd, he'd become to head, um, you know, a very secretive department that got involved in the creation of chemical weapons in Korea, which is still denied to this day that the Americans used chemical weapons. But they were um, experimenting with uh, chemical weapons. And Frank Olson was one of the scientists working on this project. And it's believed, this is the real story, I'll save you, I mean, you know, if the, spoiler alert. So if you want to, you know, watch the show, because it is brilliant. Um, but it is believed that Frank Olsen was involved in um, chemical weapons. Um, not only research, but production and deployment. And that chemical weapons were used. Because um, the Chinese did claim that in the Korean War that uh, Americans were using chemical weapons against the Koreans, uh, the North Koreans. And uh, obviously the North Koreans still claim that to this day. So, um, you know, it appears to be that Frank Olsen was somebody involved in that. He worked at Fort Detrick, which was the big uh, chemical weapons lab um, in America. Which, interestingly, when um, somebody from the Chinese Communist Party uh, was uh, asked whether COVID came from the lab in Wuhan, the uh, spokesman for the Chinese Communist Party said, uh, no, it didn't. You should actually try Fort Detrick, which is very interesting. It might have actually been truth there. Uh, so, you know, um, so this goes right to the heart of, you know, the issue of chemical weapons, the issue of biological weapons, which is a terror as mighty as... as um, as uh, the use of nuclear weapons, except it's silent. And obviously you can never tell. I mean, when you release a, is it just a disease that's, you know, that's happened naturally? You know, there's a kind of covert element. Um, so, you know, this documentary really explores that. It explores the, the, the creation of the MK Ultra program, which I'm sure will be fascinating to everybody who watches the report from Tiger Mountain, everybody at the Unshackled, everybody at Cafe Lockdown. Um, it, the life of Frank Olsen and his son, who became a kind of obsessed with trying to get to the truth about what happened to his father, and obviously the ultra-mysterious 
Dr. Sidney Gottlieb, the uh, Jewish mastermind of the MK Ultra program, who by the late 70s had retired to an organic farm somewhere in like Ohio or like this. So, it, I mean, you know, he was somebody who was so secretive that, you know, his actual existence was denied. But in relation to Frank Olsen, he had to go before Congress and testify. So we've got some photographs of him. You can see them online. And he became an organic farmer uh, in the late 70s and occasionally would appear before Congress to speak on a couple of very secretive programs. And he died of old age in the late 90s, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you know, um, the MK Ultra program obviously was involved in things like the maturing candidate, creating assassins that might possibly could have been involved in the assassination of um, JFK, um, RFK. There's a lot of very, very interesting and, and disturbing stuff there in relation to MK Ultra. And this documentary, Wormwood, goes right into it. And it's made by this brilliant filmmaker, Errol Morris, who's produced a, a beautiful four-hour documentary on that. And I can't recommend it enough to you all. So I just wanted to um, talk about that today, tell you some of the issues the documentary raised, and to recommend it to you all to go check out. And if you don't have Netflix, well, you can always go to, uh, you know, something, somewhere else and download it off the internet if you don't want to join Netflix. So there it is. That's my report for Tiger Mountain for this week. Thank you for listening.